You know, the Salem uh, witch trials are uh, an example of a, of a mass hysteria caused by people mimicking the same behavior. Could it be verbalization like lies or emotions or fainting or whatever to draw attention to themselves? Now, uh, that's uh, perfectly chronicled because you've seen documentaries and written accounts throughout the Massachusetts area about this happening. But today we're going to be talking about a, an alleged similar event not because of witches but because of emotional stress or uh, psychological uh, poverty or, or uh, problems of living, living in rural areas so today we're talking about the dancing plague of 1518 now the dancing plague also called the dance epidemic of 1518 was a case of dancing mania that allegedly occurred in strasbourg alsace lorraine of uh, France in the Holy Roman Empire from July 19, 1518 to September of that year. Now allegedly, according to published reports, somewhere between 50 and 400 people took to dancing for days. Now the outbreak began officially in July 1518 when a woman began to dance feverishly in a street, a street in Strasbourg. By early September, the outbreak began to subside. Now historical documents including physician notes, cathedral sermons, local and regional chronicles and even notes issued by the Strasbourg City Council are clear that the victims danced. It is not known why. Now historical sources agree that there was an outbreak of dancing after a single woman started to shimmy or, or to move around and then a group of mostly young women joined in and the dancing did not seem to die down. It lasted for such a long time that it attracted the attention of the community's magistrate and bishop, and some number of doctors ultimately intervened, putting the afflicted in a hospital. Now, events similar to this are said to have occurred throughout the medieval age, including in the 11th century in Saxony, where it was believed to be the cause of demonic possession or divine judgment. In 15th century uh, Apulia, Italy, a woman was allegedly bitten by a tarantula and the venom made her dance convulsively. The only way to cure the bite was to shimmy and to have the right sort of music available, which was an accepted remedy by scholars like Kircher. Now, a contemporary explanations including, included demonic possession and, of all things, overheated blood. Now, controversy still exists on whether the people ultimately danced their deaths. Some sources claim that for a period, the plague, the big plague, uh, killed about 15 people per day. But the sources of the city of Strasbourg at the time of the events did not mention the number of deaths or even if there were fatalities. There do not appear to be any sources to the events that make note of any fatalities. The main source for the claim is one John Waller, who has written several journal articles on the subject, and his book, A Time to Dance, A Time to Die, The Extraordinary Story of the Dancing Plague of 1518. The sources cited by Waller that mentioned deaths were all from later accounts of the events. There was also uncertainty about the identity of the initial dancer. It was either an unnamed woman or a person called Frau Tofia, Trophia, and a number of dancers involved again ranked between 50 and 400. Of the six chronicle accounts, four support Lady Trophia as the first dancer. Now, in the modern era, some believe the dancing could have been brought on by food poisoning caused by the toxic and psychoactive chemical products of herbal fungi, which grows commonly on grains such as rye used for baking bread. Uh, erogotamine is the main psycho psychoactive product of ergot fungi and is structurally related to LSD which is LSD-25, and is the substance from which LSD was originally, 25 was originally synthesized. Now the same fungus has also been implicated in other major historical anomalies, again including the Salem witch trials. Now however, Waller in the Lancet argues that this theory does not seem tenable, since it's unlikely that those poisoned by ergo could have danced for days at a time nor would so many people have reacted to its psycho psychotropic chemicals in the same way. The ergotism theory also fails to explain why virtually every outbreak occurred somewhere along the Rhine and Moselle rivers, areas linked by water but with, diff by, with do quite different climates and crops. Now, stress-induced mass hysteria has also been claimed as, a, as an important factor. Now, uh, this could have been a florid example, again, of psychogenic movement disorder happening in mass hysteria, or something called mass psychogenic illness, which involves many individuals suddenly exhibiting the same bizarre behavior, like the modern era. 
<laughs> the behavior spreads rapidly and broadly in an epidemic pattern. This kind of component could have been caused by elevated levels of psych psychological stress caused by the ruthless years, even by the rough standards of the early modern period, the people of Als Alsace were suffering. Now, Waller speculates that the dancing was stress into psychosis on a mass level, since the region where the people danced was riddled with starvation and disease, and the inhabitants tended to be superstitious. Now, 700 cases of dancing plague were reported in the same region during the medieval era. Now, the psychogenic illness could have created a chorea, uh, from the Greek chorea, meaning to dance, a situation comprising random and intricate unintentional movements that, uh, that filth from body part to body part. Now, diverse choreas uh, or St. Venus's dance, St. John's dance, Tarantism, were labeled in the Middle Ages referring to the independent epidemics of dancing mania that happened in Central Europe, particularly at the time of the plague. Now, if you're wondering if this had anything to do with the flash mob sensation of the last number of years, not for me to say, but all I can say, I heard about this plague when I was in middle school and I researched it back in the 1970s and we still cannot find out why it was either conceived or published. Was it a folk tale? Was it a reality? Was it just a legend? Did the Salem witch trial uh, participants read about this and uh, said we're going to use this to draw attention to himself? It has to, it has to, it comes down to this. Were the participants in the Salem witch trial trials and this alleged uh, event were there to draw attention to themselves. Who's to say? Because the human mind uh, can can lift a person, lift weight to save a person, can jump up into a river and save a person. Uh, a human mind and body is capable of anything. But would dancing yourself to death? Uh, were they dancing to music? Were they dancing to sounds of the, their community? What caused them to dance? Were they have hearing uh, sounds in their heads? Again, I wasn't around at the time, but 600 years later, technically, uh, 500 years later, excuse me, still a mystery. So if you like what we're doing with our uh, vintage uh, podcast on the history of uh, weird cases in the human history, let us know with a like, comment, subscribe. I may do them more often over the summer because, as you know, the greatest animal to crack up is the human being because you never know what they're going to do or what's going to be thrust upon them. Thanks for listening. Bye.